So I'm here with Dan, he's one of the, the leaders of the PowerPoint development team, which is really interesting. And I want uh, to ask him uh, some questions about it. But before we do that, can you tell me a little bit more about how your team is built up? Like, how many uh, colleagues do you have hmm. and where are you based? Sure. Uh, the PowerPoint team is based primarily in Mountain View, California. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, around 100 engineers or so, uh, and we have uh, around 15 program managers. Um, so that's what I do. Uh, we have uh, partners in Redmond, Washington, so that's where most of the rest of office is based. Okay. Uh, we also have development centers all around the world. So we have development centers in India, in uh, Beijing, in Taipei, so yeah. all over the place. Wow. Uh, but the, the core of PowerPoint is developed in Mountain View, California. Okay. Um, one uh, thing I heard it in, here in the conference as well. Um, when you look at, for example, the animations, mm. like you have like a million animations and you have like the twist, uh, swirl, turn around, you know, mm. and it makes the presentations horrible sometimes. Mm. So can you help me understand why is it in there? Oh, sure. Um, a lot of that stuff has been in there for just a lot for a long time. Yeah. So, I mean, PowerPoint, you can sort of think of it as a, as a toolbox and we have filled it up with many, many tools over the almost 30 years that we've been working on the product. Uh, we know that, you know, with a toolbox, you can build a, a beautiful house or a n maybe not so nice house with those yeah. tools. Yeah. So a lot of what we're focusing on now is ways to automatically uh, repackage some of those tools to help people make really beautiful stuff. So uh, designer is a great example of this where, uh, Definitely, yeah. you know, designer goes and it, it just sort of you insert a picture uh, or you type some bullets and designer automatically comes back with recommendations of beautiful slides and it's taking advantage of all of the tools that we have within PowerPoint, but it's not making users try to figure out how to use them effectively. So that's sort of a lot of where we're going is not necessarily removing tools to make it, to restrict people, but to try and promote uh, the functionality in ways that just sort of flows directly with how people are already using the software to be more effective. Yeah, because you're talking about design now and you can also, I think, automatically give people uh, animations like... Mm -hmm. Uh, give them uh, 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 examples of what which they can use, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, and more is, is another. Yeah. yeah, is that something? Because with designer, you give like people uh, some examples, and you can do it like this. Is that something you're gonna do that in the future as well with animations, probably? Uh, so, I mean, Morph is sort of our one example of us trying to reimagine how you can use motion within a presentation. So, Morph. Um, makes it very easy to sort of create more complex animations without having to go through the trouble of using all of the, the very specific animation animation things. Yeah. Uh, I think as we go forward, I can certainly imagine designers starting to give you back design ideas that either they may, may span slides, with maybe morph, they have morph, with, yeah. like maybe they morph, maybe animations, other things like this. Yeah. I, mean, I think it's, it's very much in line where we're going to try. And again, like if, if you imagine just expanding how we package the tools or repackage the tools effectively. Yeah. Um, you know, motion can be a big part of that. Yeah, I think we have a bright future ahead of us. I yes, think. yes. Can you show us a little bit uh, inside of, of the things maybe we have in a year? Like, which, which cool things are you working on? Uh, well, I, I can't go into tons of specifics, but I can say that, uh, you know, we, we ship updates every month now. Yeah. Uh, to the core product, which is great, which is great, yeah. and we ship updates to stuff like Designer every day. So Designer, for example, is always getting better. Uh, we're using machine learning. We're using, uh, you know, Nancy Duarte talked about the yeah. future of presentations being more around AI and machine learning and things like that. Yeah, and those are all techniques that we're already using in products like Designer to actually learn and improve. So if you look, the, the suggestions you get back, the rankings actually change based on what people are using and finding effective, uh, as well as new capabilities that we're adding. Yeah. So we're, we're really trying to, to learn from what our customers are doing and to enable them to be more effective and to do that very quickly. So uh, it's hard to look out a year because we're, we're sort of going every month and it can change because maybe we'll find out that one or two months from now we're not where we thought we would be. And so we want to be able to be flexible to sort of, you know, change direction if we need to, to make sure that we're always building the best product we can. Yeah, all right. Um, and take it a little bit further. We have one year, like in 10 years, what do you think uh, the future is going to look like? We have now virtual reality, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, AR. Mm. So what do you think, HoloLens stuff? 
How, how do you envision it? Gosh, it's super hard to know. Uh, I mean, I, I think, again, going, going back, I'll, I'll sort of paraphrase Nancy again and say, I mean, I think a lot of presenting will always be sort of about the human element. And yeah, I think definitely. that the tech will always be sort of supporting that in some way. And so in 10 years, uh, who knows, maybe something like HoloLens will be small enough and convenient enough that people will be wearing them around and, and sort of uh, using them, them in on which the case. Table and yeah. So then maybe the maybe presentations are something where it's sort of engaging your device and it's not about, it moves off of the big screen and onto smaller screens that people have. I mean, I think that's something we're already seeing. Yeah. Uh, people carrying smartphones, laptops, tablets, um, you know, you, you presenters woefully talk about uh, their attendees looking at their phones and doing these things and being distracted. And so I think al already you're seeing uh, sort of a movement to move the presentation to smaller screens. And so it's not hard to imagine that uh, moving to whatever sort of the future of displays are, be that virtual reality or augmented reality. Um, I can also imagine remote attendees being a more direct part of the of the presentation through virtual reality or augmented reality or things like that. Yeah, and are there things like, um, as from your position that you are already working on, like the HoloLens technology within PowerPoint, for example, or are there already options that you are thinking about? Uh, well, we already have a version of PowerPoint available on the HoloLens, but it's sort of an initial, uh, it's sort of we have Word, Excel, and PowerPoint available on HoloLens yeah. um, as a very How basic look? level. Uh, it looks great. Yeah. Um, but it's, a, you know, it's, the, it's the version that we ship in the Windows Store, uh, is, and so it's a, it's a flat version of the app, but you can sort of pin it to a wall or hang it in space and sort of use it that way. Yeah. So we're definitely looking at the technology, um, as I'm sure most people are. Uh, not sure yet how it will sort of unfold uh, as as we sort of progress, yeah. but it's definitely something that we're looking at. Wow! So yeah, again, I think we have a bright future. I, I completely agree. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yes, me too. Thanks a lot. Absolutely, my pleasure.